Now at this point, we're well on our way to creating a, a very cool project very quickly, a full featured project. It's still up to us to populate it with the content and such. And um, just like any tool, we can do it all ourselves uh, from scratch like we did here, or we can have something that helps us. So in classic web design, we would write our own HTML code, we'd make a website. Then this amazing thing uh, came out called Dreamweaver. We would use Dreamweaver and create a, a project that's writing code for us, but still gave us the ability to write our, our code manually, and we've got a project faster. Then we've got jQuery Mobile and such, and we saw here we're writing it ourselves. I'm going to introduce you to sort of like the Dreamweaver of jQuery Mobile. There's many pieces of software out there that's trying to help us do this faster and easier. I'll show you one that I like, that I've used in this class for several years because what we can do is put this together and then uh, still work with our code and we'll get quickly into a, into a full featured project. So um, I'm going to, um, as, as I recall, it might matter here, so I'm going to go in Chrome. I'm going to switch over to Google Chrome and let's go to this website, Kodika. Dot com. I've never heard it spoken, so I'm assuming that's how you say it. It could be Kodika. I don't know. Kodika? Kodika.com. I'm going to create a class full of people saying it wrong, maybe. I don't know. I, I've always said it like this. I've never heard anyone say it in real life. So Kodika, C-O-D-I-Q-A. Uh, Let's go to Kodika.com. You notice here it's saying Kodika competitors, comparisons. There's more than one company that's trying to solve this problem of how do I make a mobile project quickly? This is one of them. Uh, as a matter of fact, nowadays with the latest versions of Dreamweaver, it's coming with this stuff, a way to create a mobile project. But let's go check out Kodika.com. Build jQuery mobile apps, the easy way. Kodika is a powerful drag and drop builder for creating cross-platform HTML5 mobile apps and websites. It's simple, easy to use, and so darn useful. So you, you're going to get some software like this, where you're going to see an editor, a preview. You're going to drag and drop elements. It's going to be writing the code for you. But again, that it's still, it's still very useful and fully editable. I can still go in and tweak all my code. Um, it's going to really sell itself how great it is. What's the catch? It's not free. The catch is that it's not free. We can try the demo. Let's, let's ignore the price for the moment. Let's try the demo right here. Now, I don't work for them. I don't get a kickback. I wish I did because I mention them every semester. <laughs> I ask them and they say, no, we don't do that yet. No affiliate links or anything. But anyway, let's check out the demo for a moment just to uh, find and get started. We have this sort of project here that looks like what we did together. And then on the left side, I can get these little widgets. I'll put in a button. There's a button. Here's the various things I can do with it. Oh, there's where I can change my animation. Instead of typing, typing data transition, I can just select it here. Things that we didn't get to, like, well, if I add an icon, Where do I position my icon, top, left, right, whatever? Well, this is doing it for us, yes. But notice on the bottom right, let me see that code. So anything that you're doing here, oh, I can add a YouTube video, sure. Just drag it in here. You fill in its details, and then you can check the code. There's the code, and uh, somewhere it's going to tell me, oh, here it is. It's doing an iframe and such. So it's going to show us that there's data roll button. So and you said that you can customize it also. Mm -hmm. We can we can customize it, and uh, it's very powerful. So photo input, radio buttons, everything that we did together by hand, we can do here, drag and drop. But here's the catch, of course. Like I said, it's not free. <coughs> 
if I go check out the price, $16 monthly for the individual plan, which you can have three projects and one user. And it goes on. This one right here should probably say enterprise. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be at least $60 a month. Well, there's um, there's the there's the web version. Basically, you create an account, you sign in, and you work on the project on the web. Um, I believe they also have the desktop version here. So if you if you navigate over, if I go back to the home screen and I go over to pricing, under pricing. You can get the desktop version, which is the one time fee. You buy the license this time and you download the software. And that one's going to be $79. So instead of paying that, uh, I already forgot how much, $20 a month, you're going to buy this one time fee. Pros and cons, of course. If you buy the subscription, you can access it on any computer, Windows or Mac. You just need a web browser, but you're paying monthly. If you get the one-time license, the pro is it's just a one-time fee. It doesn't expire. You can keep using it even when version 10 comes out. You can keep using the old version. But the catch there is it's installed on that one computer, and you need another license technically for your other computer. I won't turn you in if you, you know, use it more than once, but you need to pay for it to be legitimate. And this is one of many software out there that will help you do this. Kodika. And you can get a seven-day trial. So maybe download it, make your app in seven days, and then, I don't know, get, get famous and rich off of that app, and then buy the $79 version. Um, yeah, that's what works. Yeah, my, I was using stuff like this before, but they don't let you customize it. The code, you have to use their mm -hmm. stuff, which was like this. The thing with this one is it, it does um, give you the ability to pull up the code and then you know edit the colors and the themes of everything. It's just going to keep telling you in the paid version, um, and then it's going to have the you know export and all of that. And what would be nice is well, here's one way. You know, it's not that expensive, seventy-nine dollars in the grand scheme of things. But if you're creative, you know, there is you can download your project, but you do have to still buy it. But if you're really creative, you might look somewhere to be able to see how the code is designed or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that project that you're creating, well, it's just code. You can see any code and work with it. But let me tell you this. Uh, these these people here at Kodika they've they've made this product and it's very cool and I've used it in this class to to get us up and running and create cool projects and such and then at a certain point you know they were in they were in like beta testing mode for a long time and they had the full featured version ready for you to use as a demo uh, far enough so that then you can click download my code you could click to download your code and it would be your full project. But eventually they went, you know, to full release, and now it's seventy-nine dollars or sixteen dollars a month, and they're doing something right because if you see at the top here, we're joining forces with Ionic. Ionic is another big name in this world, and it's basically a competitor to jQuery Mobile. Everything that we've been doing here, this design and this structure of jQuery Mobile, there's more than one team that says we can do it better. One of them is Ionic. There's another one called Semcha. We can look them all up. There, we can get a whole list on Wikipedia, probably, of all of these companies vying to create the perfect mobile framework. One is not better than the other. The best one is the one that works best for you. I'm teaching jQuery Mobile in this class. You can go on and learn Ionic. And it looks like Ionic bought jQuery, not me, bought Kodika. So they're going to integrate really well, probably, possibly. Read the blog. Um, but I was using the, their website for teaching purposes, and it worked really nice. And then one semester, I was preparing my lessons and such. And then I checked my links, and I went to Kodika, and like, it's not free anymore. I need to teach it, and it's not free anymore. So I reached out to them. I tweeted them, and I asked them, hey, I'm an instructor, and um, you know, can you accommodate and such? And they say, we do have student discounts. I forget how much it costs, but if you contact them, there is a student discount. So you can get it a little cheaper, probably you know, $20, $30 cheaper. 
That's nice. But what they also told me was, let me give you this link, the secret link that you, you and your students can access, where you will be able to edit your project and download your code for educational purposes. So let me give you that link. I don't have it memorized, so we'll go over here. Delicious.com slash VMCampos. Have you guys heard of Delicious before? If you haven't heard of Delicious.com, it's a bookmark saving website. You are on your home computer, you find a cool website, you save it to your bookmarks on your computer, and then you come to class and I don't remember the address. Where is that address? It's on my home computer. You get delicious, you save your bookmarks here, and you can access them on any browser. Google Chrome has that built in now, Firefox has that built in, they've all got it built in now. But I've got like 400 links here that I've saved for years, ranging from a bunch of tech topics. Um, you can go here, delicious.com slash vmcampos. Yeah, 405 links. And all of these links that I've been accumulating and I should have checked it, but down here somewhere back in... If you scroll down to January 15th, 2014, I've got a link that says Kodika Prototypes. And uh, you save links and then it says 164 other people also saved it. Super secret. Only seven people have saved it. Yeah, it's on January 2014. And what that is, is basically the full featured, full enough featured version of Kodika. More importantly, we can download our code. On Delicious, you need to scroll down until you find January 15th, 2014. And then you will see a link a bookmark called Kodika Prototypes. What I want to do toward the end of today's class is, yes, we created this project at the moment from our own bare hands and it looks really nice. And um, it's it's, it's going on its way. What I want to do is I want to see how we can use Kodika uh, uh, to create a project and download its code and when we come back next time we'll start with that code so that we can uh, mo move even faster. Um, on the website here then click on that Kodika Prototypes link. We'll go back to Kodika Prototypes and look at this, we've got all of the widgets and so forth. Just drag and drop. What I want to do is I want to borrow all of the widgets. I can, of course, go to jQuery Mobile and read the manual and read how every widget works. Or I can download all of these widgets and then use them a little faster. So what I mean by this is I'm going to drag the page header up here. I'm going to drag a page footer. Now be careful because you can accidentally drop the footer into the header, which doesn't make sense. Make sure you drop it down there. So I've got a header, I've got a footer. Be careful here also. If you don't see a download button, switch web browsers. Sometimes I see a trouble with older versions of Internet Explorer that you do all of this work, you go to download it, there's no download button. So I'm in Chrome. Remember I said earlier, let's go on Chrome. And what I'm going to do is just going to borrow all of these widgets. The nav bar, I'm going to drag it into the header. It comes with one button. But on the right here, I can add more buttons. So add a new button, add a new button. I can put in a couple of icons here. Again, it's giving me all this code, inspect code. Technically not your full code. It doesn't start with the head tags, it doesn't start with the doc type, but there's your code. But we won't have to do that. We're going to download it, and it's going to download with the full complete project. Yes. 
Now this doesn't have the different, this doesn't have uh, <coughs> sections. We'll, we'll have to still do that manually. So this isn't going to do it all for you, but this is going to give me what's the code to make a map or a heading and so forth. I'm just going to drag these pieces over and I'll work with them in Notepad a little later. I'm just going to drag them in here. Give me an image. Give me a map. Heading, well that's an easy one, but I'll put a heading in there. Again, be careful where you're dropping it. If they're all ending up in the black spot at the top, you're putting it in the header. Make sure you're putting it in the main content area. This is something we haven't gotten to yet. We've got these collapsible elements. Collapsible is going to be something that opens and closes to show you more content. See on the right side you've got properties. I've dragged collapsible elements. We've got one section, added another section by adding a new section. The way this will work, and you can click on test up there to kind of see how it works. This opens and closes to show you more content. You see that all the time. Let's say you go to the options of your app. You have a section on privacy. You click privacy, it opens up to show you more sections, more content. That could be a collapsible element. We have this grid. This is very cool because the grid will allow us to divide up our screen into multiple columns and uh, rows and columns here. Put me out of work. <laughs> That's why I waited till day four. <laughs> List view. This is another sort of thing that you can uh, create this content where you've got these buttons and dividers. I'll go into detail. Yes, we're doing it quickly and we're adding this, but we're still going to get back to Notepad. We're still going to write the code and I'm still going to explain what it does and all of that. But here's going to be a starting point for us where I can create a little section with some buttons that I can click to go elsewhere, a different kind of navigation. Yes. Now, because of this special link, there's no saving option, right? Exactly. The closest we have is the download our code, which we'll do. That's perfect. Yeah. That's all we need. We're going to write our own code. If we buy the $16 a month subscription, our projects get saved in the cloud. So we log in from any computer. Our code will always be there and safe. If my computer blows up, I still have my code up on my account. $16 a month. If I buy the one-time $80, one? Well, it's just one time $80, and that pays for itself you know, in a few months, and I can then use the code as many times as I want. And The paid version does have a few more things that this one doesn't have. Remember, we saw the YouTube link on the other one, but we can do that ourselves. Um, on this form stuff, you may have already done it, and if you did, that's okay, but I'm not going to get the form stuff yet. I'll get back to that because eventually our project we're going to create these form elements. When we get to the actual device, we're going to use like the native uh, features of, of forms and, and sharing and such. So the form code here won't serve us too much when we get to that point. So if you want the form elements, you can grab them, but I'm not going to. I grabbed everything else except the forms. And I might not need this grid on my home screen. I might need it on my about screen. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get to that once we download our code. So when we use this Kodika prototype thing, it, we get all the widgets and whatever. Be careful not to refresh your browser or not to navigate away. You're going to lose it all. There's no save here because it's free. It's the prototypes. If you've got you know, some elements here, I put some buttons and all, and all of that footer, some of these collapsibles, and a button. You can still select and move them around. Are you going to share your project? Yes, exactly. What I'm creating here, I'll also put it in the network folder, and what I worked on earlier, I'll put it in the network.
If you like what you've got, then at the top right corner, click Download. I'm in Chrome, so it automatically started to download, and that should end up on your desktop. If you don't know where it ended up, you can click the little triangle, Show in Folder, and that will open your folder wherever it's downloaded. <coughs> so that's now our real project we're going to work with. But let's take a moment, put together something like this, download your code. And I'm going to make a copy of it up to my flash drive. It gives it to me in a zip file because it comes with a couple of extra files. So into the network folder, if you want, I've put the, the, the code that we wrote together. I put my, my code in there. So where I ended up with it at the moment, I put it in there. <clears throat> I put the bit of notes that I wrote as well. And I put in the thing that I just made in Kodika right now into the network folder, if you want any of that. We'll do a couple more things and we'll wrap up with some lab time. But I'm making you aware of Kodika, just because I think it's a very quick way to get started on a project. I use it when I when I work on, on a brand new app, because yes, I could write it myself, but if I start with this, it saves me some effort, and then I then I proceed. Yes? Yeah, what's the name of that Kodika file? Oh, uh, I called it uh, 201618victor.zip. It's the only zip file at, at, at the moment. I'm going to show you what's the result of this, of downloading this, because we need to extract it to work with it. So I'm going to give you, you know, 30 more seconds to finish what you're doing, and then I'm going to get back to doing a little bit more work here. I'm going to show you. We've downloaded this, this project. What do we do with it? We need to get started. So 30 seconds, and then I'm going to proceed. I mean, 30 seconds to copy the file file. No, 30 seconds that if you want to put together your own Kodika project, you can wrap that up. All right, so let's see what we ended up with. We created this project, then we downloaded the, the, the code. We need to extract it. So I, I've got a copy of it on my flash drive. Whatever you download, it's probably on your desktop. Uh, you want to right-click the zip file and select Extract All. It'll say where. It's going to go to my flash drives. So fine, just go ahead and extract it. It opens in another window. Inside of that folder, then, I've got a, pro a folder called Mobile Website. Okay. Inside of Mobile Website, I've got index.html, Kodika, ext.js, and Kodika, ext, CSS. Uh, I'm going to say that means external. My, I've got a, 
I've got a JavaScript file and a CSS file. Basically, when I write my custom code, that's where I'm going to put it. When I write my own JavaScript to make, you know, share on Twitter, I'm going to write the code there. When I customize my background colors, I'm going to get tired of that gray background. I want a yellow background. I'm going to write my CSS code in that CSS file. And it already created those files and linked them back to the index file for me. So again, a little bit of time saver for me. I, of course, can write the code myself. But if this did it for me and it did it well, well, that's a good starting point. So in, uh, in Notepad, for the moment, I'm going to close the files I've got open just because I, I can have a lot open. I'm going to close my open files. And on this trick, you can do this trick that if you select all three of those files on Windows Explorer, you can right-click, edit with Notepad, and all three will open up. So basically open open the index.html file and the two Kotika files from your extracted zip file. Don't try to open these in the zip file, it doesn't work. You have to extract the zip first, just right click extract, and then we can edit in Notepad the three of them. The CSS file, it's empty, we're going to write our own CSS code. The Kodika JS file is also empty. We'll write our own custom JavaScript. The index file, in my case, ended up being 123 lines. There was maybe more or less, that's fine. But it's going to have data roles, it's going to have links over to jQuery already for me, all of that stuff. It's actually also going to have other things that I didn't even talk about in the class, which I'll talk about, of course. Question. The default is that it extracted it to the same place where it was saved. So on my flash drive, when I did extract, it's saying, I'm going to put it in the F drive in the same folder where the zip file is at. So if you've got yours on the desktop, check your desktop. That's where it might have extracted to. Yes? Can I uh, do a right click on the Quotica CSS file? It takes me to an app. Um, it should be, was it like a search or browse? So you can choose uh, which one you want to use? Sure, but it should be automatically Okay, so I'm going to mention a couple of things here, and then we'll wrap up and you'll have homework. Even though there's no homework in this class, you're going to have a little homework. Or you can wait for next week and take my file. The point is, if we look at our code, line 27 or so, we have div data roll page. What's wrong? It's a div. In class, we talked about that we need section. Then I've got div, data theme, data role, header. What's wrong there? Another div. That should be header, data role, header. Then we've got div, data role, navbar. You see where I'm getting at. This code from Kodika is not using the, the modern HTML5 semantic code. There's your homework. You need to switch the generic divs to the ones we learned today. I'm going to do it right now, and I'm going to put a copy of the code in, in the folder if you want it. For practice, maybe, you do it. We're going to end the main lecture at this point, and uh, when we, we'll have some lab time, and when we come back next time, we're going to take the starting point. We're going to start talking then about, we're going to shift a little gears to talk a little bit about app project design. We're getting this ideas of coding, but it's not a good idea to just dive into coding without an idea. 
So we're going to talk about the idea for our app, we're going to talk about its structure and its purpose and all of that good stuff, and then we'll get to coding. Because if you're going to be your, the app developer, you need to be well-rounded. You need to have the idea, you need to have the code, you need to have the design, you need to sell it and market it and all of that. Three-month class. Yes? On the final project, as far as to this point, we're going to create the design of it like this, and then we're going to go further than that to write our own code and do things that Kodika can't, like databases and all of that. Which reminds me, um, let's take one more little quick thing and then we'll, we'll break. Uh, if you go to Google what is it, play.google.com you go to play.google.com um, and search at the top my SDCE this is our end result uh, I mentioned the one on Amazon uh, but this is the one on Google Play in the class, we're going to go toward cre publishing our app, if you choose to, uh, on Amazon, because it's the most free version. <clears throat> Google Play costs, I believe, $28. One-time fee, $28, to get on Google Play to sell or give away your apps. Even if you're going to give free apps, you still have to pay Google one-time fee, $28. Well, we're going to look at Amazon, and on Amazon it is totally free. To, pay, uh, to give paid or free apps. So in this class, we're going to focus on publishing to Amazon because it's free, and I'm not going to ask you to pay a whole $28. But here, then, you will see the example of the project app that you, if you've got an Android phone, you can download it right now on your Android and check out what we're going to end up with. And we're going to do this. We're going to create an Amazon account, and we're going to create a store listing and do screenshots and all of that, like a real developer. And... Uh, permissions and all of that stuff like a real developer. We will do that in month three. Once we've developed our main design month one, once we started to target mobile devices in month two, and advanced stuff, and then in part three, and publish. So that's what we're going to go with, my SDCE, the unofficial SDCE app. Any general questions? Yes. Uh, I always was under the impression, somebody told me that if you wanted to do, say, a game, it's different if you do it in uh, Apple. Apple, you have to do it differently in an Apple than you would on a Windows or a uh, Android. Is that true? different code? No. Yeah, it's it, you have to. It's I guess like Apple, of course, it, it's own unique mm -hmm. operating system. Yeah, that's what I said on day one. Um, traditionally, we would write Java code for Android, we would write Objective-C for iPhone, and we would write C-sharp for Windows Phone. Okay. In this class, we're learning HTML, and next month we're going to learn the secret that will convert that HTML code to all the languages. And that's okay. Cordova, also known as PhoneGap. So that's what the whole crux of next month will be. Okay. Is it free? It's free. Okay. All right, everyone, that's it for the moment. I'm going to update my code. I would recommend you do it for practice. And uh, we'll be having some lab time until 9.30, and we'll do it again next time.